Welcome. Our new shipment of comics hasn't come in yet, so we're a little light today. Don't touch anything. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Utopitech is buying up everything. Piñata Pete's used to be an offbeat little staple of our community. Now it's all monkey gloves and eagle eyes. What a gimmick. No offence. Your Utopitech enhancements are real cutting edge. And my biggest complaint is that Utopitech is building a mindless consumer base. Just grab one of those bobblehead raptors. Hey, don't look at me for help. You're the one wearing the monkey gloves. They're equipped with laser grab, you know. Just point at the raptor by closing your lower three fingers around the grip, and when the laser is targeting the raptor you want, pull your pointer finger down on the trigger to pick it up. Cheap, mindless junk. But I can't keep enough of them in stock. People are lining up for them. You may have noticed my service bell. With your Utopitech Eagle Eye enhancements, you should see a little asterisk floating near the bell. Really? Using your monkey glove laser for a mug that's right in front of you? What have we come to? Utopitech says jump. You ask, how can I if you don't build me some Ruboots? Do me a favor. Put the mug back and grab it without the laser, just to restore my faith in an unenhanced humanity. In fact, I just added a footnote above the door you came in. Turn around and check it out. Now, I suspect you came in here looking for a great adventure. And I think our special edition comic just arrived. I love a comic book world. You have to slow down and really imagine the action to get the most out of it. Reminds me of those old-fashioned radio dramas. Do you need help picking up the comic book? Use your laser pointer to pick it up. Late night in a town that goes to bed early, one DJ sits alone in a seaside radio station. 30 seconds until you're on air, reading your live lead. Well, practically alone. There was the producer. It's hard to ignore that guy. The DJ's heart began to race because in just 17 seconds they'd be on air. 13 seconds now. Eleven. Seven. Four. That'll do. I've heard worse. The show's off and running now. Hey, I was so transfixed by your performance, I missed the last call that came in. It went to the answering machine. Can you check it? Hey, uh, Taylor. You don't know me, but I... I think you're supposed to help me. Uh, I know that sounds weird, but all week I've been having these, uh, uh, these premonitions, I guess. Uh, and I was trying to ignore them, but what if they're important? <laughs> you know, so I thought, okay, if I need to act on these clues I've been getting, then I need a sign to confirm it. Then your show came on and you said, this is Taylor. And my middle name is Taylor. So I think you're my guide. I'm gonna keep listening to you for more clues, so you just, you keep doing your thing. That guy reminds me of some of the crazy people I met at AA. This town attracts nuts like a cashew convention.
set to play before the next news segment. Thanks. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You'll make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. You told me once, dear, you really love me. And no one could come between. But now you've left me, you love another. You have shattered all of my dreams. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy. Are you just pushing buttons in there? If you want to record something, the scripts with sticky notes need to be recorded tonight. broadcasting test today to keep our license only we don't have all that newfangled fancy schmancy equipment you had at the station you came from so I need you to record the message yourself just turn to the white script hit the record button when you're ready and read it super simple even you can't screw it up thought of something hilarious. Maybe try to do it kind of robot -y sounding, you know, like mechanical machine voice. I am a robot talking like a human. Oh, and the, where it says beeps, just read those two. Our sound effects board is on the fritz, so really put some oomph into it, you know, like beep, beep. Sorry, just one more thing. Don't feel tied to the beeps. Put your own spin on it, like, like, wah, 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 or, ooga, ooga, or, neener, neener, whatever you're feeling. This job is boring. Want to take a few calls? You could ask listeners to call in with the most interesting thing they've ever found. I'll have the clock count you in and tell them the best call this hour wins two all-day passes to Pinata Pete's. some calls coming in. I'll patch them through to your phone. Most of the time they want to talk, but always hang up before you give your thoughts so they can't argue back. Just then, the DJ remembered that whenever anyone takes a call, they typically begin with a standard greeting like, hi, or hello. 
The DJ thought for a minute about getting really specific and saying, This is Taylor. You're on air. What's the weirdest thing you've ever found? Oh, I'm on air. Cool. Well, I'm a beachcomber. I have a metal detector. I go search for treasure. Is she eating something? One morning, I found a case with a clue on it. I said something like, finding you is like finding a needle in a haystack. So, I mean, I figured it out. I'm real good at puzzles and stuff. I went to Haystack Rock, and there were all these candles and flowers and a shovel with a note. And the note said, say yes. So I dug there, and I found a jewelry box. The ring inside was the most expensive thing I've ever found at the beach. I sold it, and I bought a nice boat. People are so stupid. We're actually calling from the boat right now. If you don't believe me, watch the sky over Haystack Rock. Do you see that? It's because I'm on a boat. Can you believe her? I can hear them out there every night by the Sorry, I tried to pre-screen the calls. She told me a story about finding herself. I tried to hang up on her, but she slipped through. Hey, how's it going? Oh yeah? Me too. So have you seen that show where people bid on storage units that are put up for auction? Yeah. There's these people who buy abandoned storage units when the owner is defaulted on their payments. I can't believe they can do that. These are people's personal treasures and stuff, auctioned off to guys in tank tops and gold chains and stuff. Anyway, I went to one. An auction. And I wasn't wearing a tank top or anything, but I did win a unit. Got it real cheap, because this one was sight unseen. They didn't let I us bet he it lost his shirt in the deal. Actually, I made out pretty good. There was like a thousand bingo dobbers in the unit. And my aunt plays bingo. She's like really connected on the bingo scene. So I had a hookup. I sold all of them. The rest was gravy. She trolled all the little oh, ladies, Hello Kitty collectibles, that type of stuff. Yeah. It was a gold mine. I still got 45 wigs I'm trying to get rid of. All the same style and color. If someone wants them, uh, tell them to make an offer. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you my phone number. It's 702 uh, cut them off. 505 no phone numbers. Never let them give out the phone number. Hey, yeah, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, so I'm a driver for Uber. Been needing the extra cash, you know. So anyway, one night, I found this briefcase that someone left in my back seat. I thought it might be locked, but it was unlocked. So I opened it to try to figure out who it belonged to. I mean, I wouldn't usually like privacy and all that. Anyway, I opened it, and there were like hundreds of tiny sealable bags. Whoa, ask him what was in the bags. Each little bag had hair in it. Like little locks of hair with names on them. There were little labels in each with a girl's name on them. What the heck? That's crazy. Yeah, and to top it off, there was like this zipped up pot in the case. And I opened that and there were teeth. Hundreds of teeth. Oh my gosh. Make a joke about the Tooth Fairy. Anyway, I never joke found the, the owner. Tooth fairy.
If you're wondering, I still got it. Looking at it right now, it's beautiful, actually. I mean, it's beautiful, the things you can learn Maybe about a person. Maybe you should hang up. Cashew convention. People in this town are nuts. Maybe we should call it a night on the call-ins. Well, maybe one more. Can I take this one? I've always wondered what it feels like to take a call on the air. I never thought I really would after all this time. Do you mind? Hey, you're on the air. You still taking calls on weird things people found? Yep. What you find, kid? Well, my second cousin asked me to house it once when he was traveling for work. While I was there, I looked through all of his stuff, and I looked in his closet, and I found this journal. He and my mom weren't speaking at the time. They were in the middle of this huge feud. So I started reading the journal, because I thought it was a diary or something. Maybe there'd be some juicy tidbits about my mom. But then I realized it wasn't really a diary at all. What was in the journal, then? It was filled with letters to an imaginary kid. The first letter was ten years old, and he wrote a letter at least a few times every week. There were hundreds of them. Like he was writing to the child he wanted, but never had. Oh, wow. What did the letter say? Do you remember any of them? Oh, yeah. There was one I won't forget because I was in it. Um, I actually have it right here. I wrote it down. <clears throat> it said, I saw my cousin's kid, Brian, today. He was getting ready for his baseball game. He's a nice kid. I think you two would have been good friends. I always wanted to play catch with my son in the backyard. I would have taught you my curveball. It's unbeatable. Sorry, man. I, I didn't want to upset anyone. No, sorry. It's just heavy. People don't think about what it can be like for men who don't have kids. Women tell people how they feel about infertility or miscarriages or things like that, but men keep it to themselves. Or write it in journals, I guess. So your second cousin never had any kids, still? No. Kind of wondered if this was a kid he made a bolt together, or if he had a kid out there somewhere, or gave up a kid or something. <laughs> I never had any kids. I had an angry dad. I never knew what to expect from him. He never did anything with me. Nothing was ever good enough. I just grew up scared of him, hating him. But then as a teenager, I learned he had a mental disorder in the family that he couldn't help it. So I tried to stop hating him. But then I was scared of myself. What if it was genetic? But what if I became like him and did that to some kid? I didn't. I'm fine, but I never had kids. I didn't want to take the chance. Yeah, um, so, uh... Thanks for taking my call. Put on a record or something. I, uh, I just said that on the air, huh? Huh. That guy really wanted to be a dad. Nine pound hammer. A little too heavy. For my size. Buddy for my size. Well, nine pound hammer. A little too heavy. For my sign, buddy, for my sign, move on, buddy, pull your load of coal, how can I... I wonder if I would have been a good dad. When the whistle rolls, roll on, buddy, don't you roll so slow, how can I roll when the wheels don't go? It's a long way to Harlan, it's a long way to heaven, just to get a little bruise. Now that's the proper way to deal with sharp objects.
the time-tested practice of throwing them into pre-painted zones and giving yourself points for it. Maybe that guy should foster a kid or volunteer or something. Hey, uh, I saw it. I saw that sign, and it's a good thing. Thank you for that. With a nine pound hammer, a little too heavy for my spine. And now, uh, now I see s'more beach signs, so I think I just keep going past Pete's store and I take a left. What's your address there at the radio station? Not I can't, I can't hear you. What, what'd you say? You know what? Never mind, John found a promotional map in the seat pocket back there. Roll Turns out we're not far. Be there in a few minutes, okay? Did he say he's coming here? Tell him not to come here. This is private property. It's a long way to Harlem. It's a long way to What? I can't, I can't hear you. I said I'll, I said I'll be right there. We'll see you in a few. He can't come here. What is this weirdo thinking? Did you lock the doors when you came in? I'll, I'll check the back door. What if we had evolved more like monkeys? With four fingers and an opposable thumb instead of one measly laser pointer? Nonsense, you say? We grab things just fine with telekinesis? Well, feel free to live in the past, uh, but the yeah. tech on Highway That's 4 is looking for the insurance testers. Hey, Hal, what can I do you for? What? Call five five five. You can't hear anything. I told you we needed that maintenance three months ago. Yes, three months. I said we don't get that replaced. We're dead in the water. I'm bored. I don't remember. I sent the work order to Alice. What do you mean Alice doesn't work here anymore? Hell, I can't work like this. Take a look. I don't have time to take a look right now. I've got. Vigilantes and incompetent talent and broken sound boards to babysit. Oh, and it's raining. I'm not about to get struck by lightning. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. Yes, I'll do it right away. Hey, the station manager just called and said the signal's out. I'm going to check out the antenna. But hey, this is a side of maybe no one was hearing this train wreck of a show. This is a real emergency. Has this been a real emergency? Instructions would follow this nope. message. Maybe I could do that too. Beep. Beep. Oh, sorry. I'm in my own head. Can't let go of that call. I forget, you're not in my same train of thought. I mean, do you think I could foster kids or volunteer? Or am I too old? Howdy, stranger. I knew it. Sorry. I knew there was an emergency. You got the office time giving me clues, and this, this just confirms it. I hear you loud and clear. Today is the day I've been preparing for. Just keep letting me know what I have to do. And the clientele was loud. Fifteen million miles driving through this darkened shroud. When your thrusters have no power, then you've lost trajectory. Aimlessly, you're... Carol's Corner inviting you to come on down to Carol's Corner. Wicker a Furniture and Radio Parts Emporium. Do
Did you... Did you see that? I don't know how to describe it. I was on the roof looking at the antenna, and it was like the darkness got darker. It was like the opposite of lightning. And there was a feeling, too, like... You know how you can sometimes feel electricity in the air? It was like that. But the feeling was different. Warm and soft instead of cold and tingly. This must be what everyone's talking about. It was surprising. I, I don't know what it means, but it felt significant. And it happened to me. I know that sounds hypocritical, and I could find a way to explain it, I'm sure, but... It felt more important than that. I felt seen. Does that make sense? I couldn't fix the antenna, though. We need a signal booster, and I don't have one, but maybe we're not supposed to keep broadcasting.